Yes, look here. I've been wanting to see this place for years. <laughs> that is like the weight of a small child. Really? Good morning guys and welcome back to Journey Across Japan, the Lost Islands. This morning we are in Nagasaki. Check it out. Quite the journey, a thousand kilometers across Kyushu the last few days. We've been in Cessnas, we've flown over volcanoes, we've danced on volcanoes, we've rode a horse and been to an abandoned island. But all good things come to an end. And today we're in Nagasaki City, the last major city in Japan that I've yet to visit. And I'm really excited to kind of immerse myself in it once and for all, because it looks absolutely stunning. The city is surrounded by mountains on all sides. We are gonna go and visit Gunkanjima, Battleship Island later today. But before that, let's go and see how the guys are doing. Oh God. Good morning guys, how you doing? Hey. Good morning. Last day of your trip Natsuki, how you feeling? Yeah, good fun week, but I'm in the, uh, sad. Very sad. Very sad. Sad. Oh my god. Very sad. Oh my god. Very, very sad. <laughs> yeah. It seems we have a very different definition of the word sad. <laughs> but first things first, we've got the last challenge of Journey Across Japan, the Lost Islands. You guys have sent in over 5,000 challenges this last week. Whittled down Ooh. to three every day by our production team. But the challenge today is <laughs> uh, from LC underscore 224 who says, Bring back Dr. Jelly! Oh my Yay! god. Yay! Dr. Jelly. Hello. No journey across Japan would be complete without the world's tackiest and crappiest character, I'll Dr. Speak Jelly. Speak for yourself, I believe it's one of the <laughs> best characters ever made. Three times? So this will be the third time, yeah. One time. Energy Jelly. Energy Jelly. <laughs> Second time, your hand, hand jelly. jelly. Hand jelly. Cleverly promoting your own product. <laughs> Third time, we. What jelly? I don't know. What kind of gel? What? What else is there left? We've pretty much done every jelly that there is. What's going on? What is going on? Oh shit! This is a hair <laughs> shit. Thanks, Nasky. Yeah. Hair gel. What? You needed hair I need, gel. I need hair gel. Yeah. This time, Dr. Hair Jelly. Dr. Hair <laughs> Jelly. Yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not so enthusiastic about this. That's actually Let's, a good idea. Let's make it. You, you think that's a good idea? I mean, I don't know what other jelly you can think of. What about food jelly? No, no, no. Yeah, that's boring. Uh, all right. right. Your hair is shit. Thanks, so we're going to put some yeah, Dr. Right. Hair Jelly all right. in there. Dr. Hair Jelly, it is. Get in the Let's car. Go. Let's get out of it. Surrounded by islands and nestled in a valley on the shores of the East China Sea, Nagasaki feels pretty remote for a major Japanese city. Between its location and the absence of a bullet train, the sad truth is most tourists and travellers never get to visit, myself included. And it is a shame given that Nagasaki has a rich cultural history. In the 1500s, the Portuguese were granted permission to trade at Nagasaki Port, which quickly became a bustling hub with traders bringing tobacco, bread and textiles, while missionaries successfully converted the local population to Catholicism, until the religion was banned in 1614 by ruler Tokugawa Ieyasu, who saw Catholicism as a threat to the stability of the country, a ban that remained in place until 1871. But just as the Western world shaped Nagasaki's history, it also brought its destruction when, in the closing days of World War II, an atomic bomb was dropped on the city, reducing it to ashes and taking the lives of around 75,000 people. Unlike Hiroshima and the skeletal remains of the A-bomb dome, in Nagasaki, physical remains of the devastation are harder to find, though statues and monuments serve as a powerful reminder to the events of that day, including the iconic yet haunting peace statue, with the right hand pointing towards the sky, reminding us of the danger of nuclear weapons, while the left hand symbolises eternal peace. And 500 metres from the epicentre, outside the front of the Urakami Cathedral, the charred statues continue to stand as a chilling reminder, as the last remaining remnants of the original cathedral. Over 75 years later, it remains the most recent deployment of a nuclear weapon in wartime, but walking around the modern city, it's easy to feel a sense of optimism, that if a city like Hiroshima or Nagasaki can rebuild itself and overcome something as powerful and destructive as an atomic bomb, 
that mankind can pretty much overcome anything. While Natsuki sneaks off to do some cheeky shopping for local souvenirs, Joey and I head to downtown Nagasaki's vibrant Chinatown district to try some local dishes. Natsuki doesn't know what he's missing. Lunchtime, what you got, Joey? Kakuni manju. Kakuni. Kakuni manju. Kakuni manju. Slow cooked pork in a flour and rice based patty. Ooh! And uh, got some cheese in it as well. Yeah. Because I know you like cheese. You know the way to my heart, Joey. Anything with cheese. Only 500 yen as well. 500 yen? Mm -hmm. It's a steal. I'm, I'm quite worried we're surrounded by like 200 pigeons right now, so we've got to eat this quick before things get out of hand. Mmm. Mmm. That's so tender. Very tender. Cheese is actually pretty good. Yeah, and the, the bap is very really fluffy and light. Mm. The pork just sort of breaks apart in your mouth. Beautiful braised pork. So this is a Chinese-inspired dish. Yeah. We're in Chinatown, right? There's another dish called champon. It's a really big part of uh, cuisine down here. Champon is from here in Nagasaki. It's from this area of Nagasaki as well. Yes, because Nagasaki is geographically close to China. Yeah. It has that sort of Chinese influence in the cuisine. Mm. Only criticism, not enough pork. Well, actually, there's a store over there where you can get extra meat filling if you want. What, should we go, go get another one? Let's go do that. Let's go. And our healthy afternoon lunch isn't over yet as we head to the absurdly picturesque Meganebashi Bridge for another unique local dish. Ice cream shit, like a flower. Chirin chirin ice. Chirin chirin? Yeah. It's named after mm. the little bells that they used to ring when they would walk around the town oh. selling it. Yeah. How romantic. It's just ice cream. It looks like a flower. Nice though. Low calorie though. It's only 60 calories. We could get two. Yeah. <laughs> We're standing in front of Meganebashi. This is literally Glasses Bridge because apparently it reflects into the river and looks like glasses. But not today, because it just looks like a bridge. But it's the oldest stone bridge in Nagasaki, dating back to, I think, 1634. Mm. This whole stretch of river is absolutely beautiful. We've had Joey the Anime Man walk across numerous bridges as our model for the last half an I'm hour. A bridge model now, hey. officially. <laughs> bridge model. A bridge model. Sounds better than YouTuber. Mm -hmm. What do you do, young man? I'm a bridge model. I'm a what bridge have you know? model. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew Nagasaki was a beautiful city, but I didn't know it was this good. Mm. This feels like a... Hayao Miyazaki film. It's very I say that a lot, don't I? <laughs> it's like a Hayao Miyazaki film. Anything picturesque is a Hayao Miyazaki film to you. <laughs> is it bad that I want to splash about in the river? It is, look at that water. That is not river water. Is that an invite for me to push you in? That is not an invite for anything. Like After, <laughs> na after I push Natsuki into the waterfall, I don't trust anyone by a waterfall, especially look myself. Up. No. <laughs> look at the water, look at this. This is like the Maldives. It's really like, clean, yeah. There's so many fish and turtles splashing around in the river. Like a lot of rivers in cities in Japan aren't overly clean and certainly the ones in like Tokyo around Shibuya smell pretty pretty bad mm. and you want to avoid them. But like here, it's like a, a fresh water spring. Mm. What's going on here? Where's it gone? It's magic. Anime magic. Anime magic. <laughs> Anime magic. With Joey and I stuffed full of pork and ice cream and Natsuki satisfied with his sneaky afternoon shopping trip, before heading to Battleship Island, we all meet downtown at a 100 yen store to desperately acquire some props for our Dr. Jelly commercial. So we've got to look for a, a tub for Dr. <laughs> Hair Jelly, and I, th I think I found one. Oh my god. Screw top container 900. So you're just going to take the sticker off? Just going to take the sticker off, put a Dr. Jelly like picture or a logo or something on it. <laughs> there you go. And they fill this up with hair gel. Nice call. I need it. <laughs> Props in hand. After a brief search for a film location, we stumble across a rather unconventional solution. This is an atrocity. We've had to make our own hair gel for this uh, because in the last two Dr. Jelly commercials, we've had products to work with, right? We had Natsuki's hand gel and we had the energy jelly. This time, Joey's had to make the hair gel from scratch. So we've bought some real hair gel and now he's gonna decant it into this pot. We've photoshopped this quickly. <laughs> Chris photoshopped this in about five minutes. <laughs> and then printed it off at a 7-Eleven. And uh, now we're in a karaoke booth where we're gonna record the ad. Yeah, so Cause nowhere else is open. I'm in a karaoke booth about to spoon some hair gel into a decanter with my face on it. This is the weirdest footage. This is this is a low point for the Jerry the Anime Man dynasty. I was <laughs> eight years on YouTube for this. <laughs> we were desperate. We didn't know where to film this because we can't just walk into a barber's and be like, 
Sorry, can we take over your barber shop in Nagasaki for an hour? So if we we found this <laughs> karaoke booth that's quite big and it's got mirrors and we I think, oh, oh that's, not, that's messed up. It looks a lot like the energy jelly from Dr. Jelly One. Dr. Jelly though. どうよ、ディッシュが and rolling. That's <laughs> 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 so hard. How am I not gonna laugh? Don't laugh, don't laugh. It's so hard though, like, I am going to laugh. So we just finished filming the Dr. Jelly commercial, a career ending scene has just been filmed, yeah, shot. Right. Your hair looks horrible. Oh my god. I mean, it looks great. Did you have fun, Natsuki, filming Dr. Jelly? Yeah, fun time. Um, first time, yeah. It's his first time yeah. and last time in a Dr. Jelly commercial. Yeah. His dream just came true. Yeah, yeah not many people get to, to be in a Dr. Jelly commercial. Anyway, I'm gonna go and wash my hair, and then let's go to Gunkunjima. Let's go. Yeah. Having thoroughly sterilised my hair, we head to Nagasaki port to hop on a boat for our 40 minute journey across the sea to visit what might be Nagasaki's most famous location, an entire ghost city on an abandoned island 20 kilometres out to sea. Over the last few days, we've seen some pretty jaw-dropping locations on our journey across Kyushu, but we've saved perhaps the most visually striking destination until last. Gunkunjima, aka Battleship Island. Once the most densely populated island on Earth, now a crumbling concrete ruin. What an incredible island. I've been wanting to see this place with my own eyes for years now, and uh, it feels pretty surreal to finally see it. The ultimate place to play hide and seek. Think about it, it'd be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? The island's official name is actually Hashima Island. In 1890, Mitsubishi Motors snapped up the land after discovering deposits of coal. To protect the island from typhoons and rough seas, they built a giant rectangular seawall around the coastline, giving the appearance of a giant floating battleship. Hard to believe that people lived here. Like, yeah. a lot of people lived here. Would you live on the island? <laughs> For how much? <laughs> 35 pounds. Nah. Some of Japan's first large-scale concrete buildings were constructed on the island to house the army of workers who toiled in the coal mines. And by 1959, with 5,200 people living on the 480 metre long and 150 metre wide island, Gunkunjima was one of the most densely populated places on Earth. But just like the island of Ikishima that we explored in the previous episode, once Japan's coal industry faltered, so did the economic prospects of the island. And when Mitsubishi shut down the mine, in 1974, the 5,000 workers went with it, leaving behind an eerie, decayed urban wasteland out to sea. For over three decades, Gunkunjima was isolated from the outside world. But in 2009, the local government began allowing visitors to land on the island and explore the surroundings through a handful of tour companies. Oh, we are just alive in Gunkunjima. Dono. Looks like the you know, same army ships, um, but I think uh, broken dreams. Broken dreams. Broken dreams. Nasky's always so poetic. What do you think, Jerry? It's pretty gnarly, Orky. Gnarly. Gnarly. <laughs> gnarly. It's pretty cool, though. The key word here is gnarly. Recent appearances in films have helped catapult the island to fame, perhaps most notably in the James Bond movie Skyfall, where the island served as inspiration for Javier Bardem's house. Apparently, according to Joey, part of the live-action film Attack on Titan was filmed over the apartment blocks, and I do recognise it from the film. Terrible film, by the way, don't watch it. Maybe many money. Many money? Many money. Money smell. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. 
So this area was the uh, more residential side of things. So people used to live in these buildings right here. It's literally right next to the coal mine. Really just goes to show you how small this island was. I have to say, out of Gunkanjima and Ikishima, I think I prefer Ikishima, just because you can kind of go off and explore more freely. Whereas here, you have to come on a tour, but uh, still an incredible island. Highly recommend it. If you are coming to Nagasaki, put it on your list. Gazing over a dense concrete jungle, frozen in time, on a boat from out to sea, isn't a sight that I'll forget in a hurry. And it absolutely ranks as one of the most incredible locations I've ever witnessed in all my time in Japan. Even if I was disappointed by the absence of Javier Bardem. Where is he? Why was he there? Uh, back to Army Ship Island. Huh? Back to the Army Ship Island. Back to the Army Ship yeah. Island. Go Chris, go! Nagasaki is home to what's considered to be one of Japan's top three night viewing spots, Mount Inasayama. A 333 meter high peak overlooking the Nagasaki Bay area. It's here while looking out across the stunning view that we encounter what might be the best burger that I've ever had in Japan. And it happens to be in a shipping container. My favourite. So we're at Nagasaki Observatory on the summit of a mountain overlooking the city, incredible views, and there's a burger restaurant. And Joey's just spotted a triple cheeseburger Look at this that looks thing. like a heart attack waiting to happen. And now they're both gonna go head to head, Natsuki and Joey, to see who can eat it in the shortest amount of time. I'm gonna oh. win. I win. <laughs> so I've got Joey and Natsuki's burger. Look at that. That is like the weight of a small child. What are they gonna, this is gonna be insane. I'm glad I'm not doing it for the record. Here you go. Good luck, Natsuki, good luck, Joey. <laughs> oh. That actually looks really good, fucking hell. Never been size. <clears throat> that is like, that's bigger than my fist. I'm gonna time it. And how see. do you eating? Yeah, how the fuck? I don't know. But here we go, I'm gonna do a timer. Okay. You ready? Hold yeah. on. The first one to finish the burger wins my friendship forever. Start. Oh, 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 we're now one minute in to the race, and I say Joey's ahead slightly. But look at that mouthful Natsuki just took. Oh. To be fair, uh -huh. Natsuki beat me at the Monster Ramen Challenge, and Joey beat me at the Monster Ramen Challenge. So it'll be interesting to see who wins oh. this. They're both pretty good at food fighting. I just got a normal sized burger. I'm taking my time. It's very good. Oh. Joey's, just... <laughs> Joey's literally licking the burger. The last remnants of Wagyu beef. Mm. This is a Wagyu beef burger, by the way. It's the best beef. And that's it. Mm. Stop. Mm. Joey's won. Mm. Two minutes, 45 seconds. Joey wins eating the triple cheeseburger. Oh. Natsuki's the loser. Well done, Joey. You've won nothing. That was not worth it. My jaw actually hurts. <laughs> Bloody good burger, though. When you eat it at a normal pace. Well, what a day it's been. Battleship Island, Dr. Jelly. Yeah, good jelly. Good, good jelly. Time. Good jelly. Good, good jelly. jelly. I'm not so sure about that. But here he is, guys. Dr. Jelly, part three. Dr. Hair Jelly. Take it away. Amazing. Kyono meeting. Umaku ikito ii na. Yappari. Kami kireba yokata. Ah, doko ya da? Mani yao kana? いらっしゃいませ。こちらどうぞ。ない。なんだと。ジェルがね。バカよ。なんとかしろ。すいません。どうしたらいいか。
全国のくびりで発売中Thank you so much, guys, for joining us this time on Journey Across Japan, a thousand kilometers across Kyushu. What a week. This was easily the most intense journey across Japan we've done. So much stuff. I mean, what was your highlight? What was your highlights, guys? That's good. Yeah, waterfall. The waterfall. The waterfall, the one you fell into. <laughs> yeah, how did you fall in, Natsuki? I have a pirate pants. One day, lost. Oh, yeah, he lost the pirate pants. My pants! My pants! What about you, Jerry? What was your I favorite? I would say Ikishima. Just the abandoned island. Yeah, the abandoned island, just because they were so freaking cool and there were so many cats and I love cats. You love the cats. As for me, <laughs> my favourite memory was the horses, the horse riding. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> no, no it wasn't. It was the Cessna, the single engine plane Oh flight, yeah, we did do that. Getting over my mild fear of flying rides. There was also the volcano that we did the rap yeah, on. Oh, well, it's a rap song, right? volcano. So yeah. much stuff no, we know. No, no, volcano. We We're spoiled for choice. But for now guys, thanks for watching Abroad in Japan. We hope to see you right back here next time to do it all over again, but for now, as this is essentially Natsuki's holiday, I think he should end it playing the Journey Across Japan theme tune. Are you ready, Natsuki? Thank you. Journey Across Japan. Have a good holiday.